Hi, everyone. Welcome to the timingresearch.com crowd forecast news for December 11th, 2023. We are recording this at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and this is episode number 411. My name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of timingresearch.com. And today I have uh, asked, uh, invited uh, Sunny Harris to join us. So you should be seeing her screen mm -hmm. right now. And the option professor is back to moderate. So I'm going to turn it over to him. Okay, thanks a lot, David, and welcome everybody. We've got a big week ahead of us, of course. A lot of news, and the markets are at uh, pretty interesting levels on a lot of these different areas. So, we got a lot to talk about here today. Um, with us is uh, Sunny Harris. Sunny, uh, quick background on yourself and what's going on over at Money Mentor. All righty. My website is moneymentor.com, and I've got all the resources there that I use in my own work and keep them someplace that I can look at them. And there's just everything you can imagine in the world there. It's about <clears throat> 700 pages. Um, uh, so Money Mentor, I'm a mathematician and a full-time trader. In two weeks, it will have been 43 years now. And I'm a programmer and author of seven trading books. Uh, the Definitive Guide to Trade Stations, Easy Language, and OOEL Programming is out at Amazon. And let's see, I do a live trading room on Wednesdays, which I'm taking a survey now to see if people want to do it every day. So if you're interested in doing an everyday live trading room, give me a call. My phone is 760-908-3070. And my email is sunny at moneymentor.com. And of course, we'll have uh, that listed at the end as well, so people can copy it down the end too. Perfect. All right. Well, let's get into the stock market because that's what everybody wants to take a look at. And uh, boy, it has been very choppy in the last uh, a few weeks. Uh, ever since we went above that forty six hundred on the uh, on the front month, uh, the front month expires on Friday, triple witching Friday, mm -hmm. and so. Um, you know, I've seen it go down to 4560 uh, after the labor report, and now it's back on the all time, not the all time high, but the high of this move this uh, today. So it's been back and forth. And then, um, like I say, this week we've got the CPI tomorrow, the PPI the following day. We've got the Fed speak on Wednesday, followed by the ECB, followed by the uh, Bank of England. And then we've got retail sales Thursday. We got triple witching Friday. And uh, the 19th, next Tuesday, the Bank of Japan is going to tell us what's going on. So talk about the, uh, what do they call that, a data dump coming? Uh -huh. We've got a data dump coming, and uh, it'll probably have something to do with these prices. So let's start with the uh, S&P. What are you seeing on the S&P with your sunny bands? Well, we had a beautiful <clears throat> move. Can you see this where the red candles turned to blue? So we Absolutely. had a beautiful, beautiful up move. Yep. Went up above the DMA, which is very positive. Right. Holds on top. It stayed up there, stayed up there. I don't have two reds in a row yet. And when gold's on top, I'm going to stay long. Yeah. Again, everything is still pointing up. The only thing that I've been uh, having some concerns with is the relative strength indexes mm. have not exactly been. I've seen some divergences. I see some flattening at around the 60 number. And uh, so that's not price evidence of it going down by any means, but it is evidence of possibly running out of gas. So uh, what, do you see anything on the RSIs that are any other indicators that might be some caution up here? Yeah, you see on the histogram that I've got here, it's got gold, 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 and then it starts turning red and getting shorter. Right. As that gets shorter, it's more and more likely to cross over the zero line. And if it crosses over the zero line, we're definitely going to go down a bit. Yeah. And it, what might, would be, mm -hmm. it might just turn gold on the next bar. If we continue to move up, it'll turn gold and go back up again. Right. But we're looking at the potential of going down here. The Elliott waivers uh, that I've listened to, they believe one of two things is happening. Either A, we are going, we are finishing a one, two, three counter uh, trend rally in a bear market. And the bear market mm -hmm. is going to reignite here rather soon. Or they've miscounted and the yeah. pullback we saw in October of 2022 was actually a three move of a counter trend to the upside. And we've started obviously uh, a one, two, three, five raise up to the upside. 
This Ed Ardini, uh, Yardini's out today talking about 6,000 on the S&P. Mm, I saw that. Yeah, using a, and again, people don't really get it. These prices don't come out of the air. They're based on really two things. One is what are the earnings? And then what is the multiple on those earnings? And, you know, he's looking for three, uh, $3 on the S&P and a 20 multiple. So that's where he's getting his 6,000. And right now we're at about 244. And if you multiply that by 19.5, which is where the PE ratio is on the S&P now, uh, you'll find that we are uh, pretty much uh, in line with the 4,600 number. So yeah, we're, we're right there. Yeah. So you see uh, this green line at the top that says 4688 on the left. Uh huh. That's an attractor that came from way back here on the left, off the chart. Look, look, we hit it and went above it. Here we hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Still trying today to make it yeah. above that line. If it makes it above that, it's going to go on up pretty strongly. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. It is definitely in the ballpark of, uh, of doing that. And uh, yeah, basically... Um, the uh, the the multiple for this year, the earnings for this year is supposed to be right around two forty four, and uh, or two thirty no two thirty five this year, and then next year is supposed to be going like towards two fifty, and then the next year he's looking for a blow off on earnings. You know, if we were to get a big drop in interest rates down to three percent, if the uh, labor market stays at three point seven percent. Uh, and the consumer spending continues to robust. I guess you can build a case for that. And if we're going on five waves to the upside, you know, these kind of numbers of 5,200 and 6,000 over time, you know, are not off the table. They seem high, but, you know, if the earnings are there, the prices can get there, right? Yeah, it sure can. You know, I know we're all technicians and stuff, but we realize, you know, it is based on some factual information, not just technicals only. Yeah. This will give us a first hint you know, because the technicals sometimes lead the fundamentals, you know? That's true. But uh, right now, uh, uh, the key number on the downside that you'd like it to hold, is there a number? Yeah, let's look back at the daily again. It'll take just a second to load. Yeah, because that 4560 number, that was the low of the pullback after the jobs report Friday, probably not a bad, probably not a bad line in the sand, right? Well, my line in the sand is at the DMA, which right here at 45, does that say 45, 90, 4,600. Oh, 4,600. Right there. That's where the, that's where the support is for me because that's the DMA. And you're looking at the uh, futures contract E-mini for March? Yes. Okay. Because, you know, yeah, Friday expires on the. Uh, right. The I know. I rolled over this morning. Yeah. Um, and I'm just looking at the. Uh, what I'm seeing on that myself real quick. Yeah. Uh, with regards to um, uh, uh, any other, like uh, you want to throw a few stocks that you like to watch, like uh, NVIDIA, Tesla, uh, Google, you know, some of the big big ones. See how they're looking NVIDIA. for you? NVIDIA. Yeah. Let's use the right keyboard. I've branched out. I now have a new computer only running trade station. And it's still not fast enough, as you can see. Okay. There's NVIDIA. Uh, look at this flat DMA across at the end of the chart. Mm -hmm. How many times it hits there. Congestion, congestion, congestion. I think we're going to break above this and go on up to the upper outer band at the very least and then head on up. So it's it's looking to best the 500 level. Yeah, it's starting to look, I mean, if this thing does bust to the upside, it's definitely looking more like uh, they were wrong on their count and we are in the five ways to the upside. I think we're in the five wave to the upside. Yeah, and to be honest, that's where the evidence points. So. I think this kind of sideways stuff over here in in the NVIDIA chart is the is a lateral four wave. It's just, it's four, but it's just sideways. And now we need to make that fifth, which will come up to the top of the screen up there. And 
of course, they've got the products that are supposed to get all the orders. So, I mean, as long as the, you know, the news doesn't shift dramatically on corporate spend on AI, mm -hmm. you know, these guys obviously are in very good shape. Um, I would say. Yeah. With regards well, to, um, say, um, uh, the other ones that are heavy in there, Microsoft, you know, that Microsoft's been making new highs. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Why is this taking so long? There we go. So Microsoft, same. Flat DMA, bouncing on it, bouncing on it. So that was an all-time high right there because this blue line is automatically drawn from the all-time high down to the current price. Mm -hmm. You can see we're, we're going to have to try for that high again. And I think we'll bounce off with the flat DMA to do it. I'm you know, very can we go, I was going to ask you a question uh, on this. Yeah, can we go back to NVIDIA? Because this is something that troubles me, but maybe it shouldn't. Because obviously the popularity of NVIDIA is uh, undeniable right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I don't want to debate that. I just want to debate the relative strength of it all. So can you go to a long-term graph? Like I'm looking at a 20-year graph. So do you have something that goes back, uh, you know, long? Yeah, monthly? Going back a pretty good amount of time anyway. Mm-hmm. That okay. goes back to the 2018. Okay, yeah. Um, basically, on the longer term one that I have, well, 2018 is good. Because um, when we had the run-up in NVIDIA on November 2021, when the whole markets were topping, and NVIDIA went up to 350. Can you see that point, right? Yeah. Now, I had the RSI there at about 87 on the 14 RSI on my monthly. How about this one? You talking about this one, Jim? I'm talking about the uh, the one in the, the one year, yeah, the three fifty price there, the one that hit the high right there. You got your cursor right on it, don't you? Right there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I see RSI. You know, but in my RSI, it was at eighty seven. I don't know what is your RSI showing. Is that close? Eighty seven. Here you go. Yeah. Now, if we compare the high up here, because I'd really like to know if my thinking's flawed. Uh, if we go up to where the highs were at this five hundred number. Mm hmm. I got uh, the first time up there, it was 77 in August. Then we made another run up there in November and RSI was 68. Mm -hmm. And so we are- RSI is not as strong as it was at the other move. Well, that's why I'm trying to make the point is, is you know, uh, with the moving averages, so look, look at where your green and the green and the purple is so far underneath the market and you have a weakening RSI. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a stock that the news changes. It's not illegal for it to drop because you saw in 2021, it obviously dropped substantially on the news changing. Uh -huh. um, do you think that RSI that, uh, that I'm looking at is worrisome at all? Or, um, or would you dismiss it as not that important? Or what do you think? I think it's, it's going to just kind of angle or am amble around right here at the end for a few more. Well, this is months, so couple of weeks maybe just okay. amble around there at nothing and then shoot on up i think I got it's you. going up so if we blew out 500 and then your rsi gets back into well into the 70s mm -hmm. um you know then you're probably in pretty darn good shape that this thing is for real yeah but i think it's it's hesitating and scaring everybody out right now but the fact that it's scaring people out and it's only going sideways is very strong that's true that's true. And I think it really is probably run on a little bit of steam because anybody who wanted to buy this thing, you know, they probably are in there. This is not yeah, like, a, yeah. this, is not a, this is not a secret stock nor a secret concept that they've got the chips that are needed for AI. So right. you, know, you wouldn't, uh, you still wouldn't be waiting around to buy it uh, on an initial purchase. So obviously there's a lot of people already in there. That's probably mm -hmm. why uh, our size uh, weakening during this big advance. Yeah. Um, and maybe obviously there was some short covering too, because, you know, somebody might've been thinking that this thing was not going to work because mm -hmm. it went, uh, but anyway, I just wanted to get your idea on that. Let's go over to, um, uh, you, uh, we had Microsoft up there and you thought it was pretty good still. You cut out, say it again. I said, uh, you want to put MSFT? I just wanted to talk about the other side, but on the, uh, Microsoft, does it look like, uh, it's still going or. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at last month's bar. Look how strong that was. This blue one right here. Uh-huh. And we're right now 
at this little red dot. So we're right there in this candle. Right. And I think this thing's going on up. Yeah, that's certainly the momentum. There's no doubt about that. Uh, is that uh, where's that uh, blue line and stuff right there? Is that uh, three eighty? Is three eighty two a resistance? I see three eighty two fifty three on yours. This blue line is from the all time low. So you, you know, I'm I'm calculating the run from way back on the left somewhere. Yeah. What was the other question? I'm saying well, there's a three eighty two fifty three up there on a green line or a green. Yeah, that's whatever. the top sunny band. Okay, so that is the high of the sunny band. So if we rally into that neighborhood, that could be some resistance. Yeah, it's more likely though to hold it up and have it move on upward, the way it's acting. Yeah, so it's likely to go above that and keep on going and turn the whole configuration up. That's not, right. that's just me guessing. Yeah. No, hey, listen, you know, uh, if you get negative on some of this stuff now, you are stepping a bit in front of a freight train. Mm -hmm. um, if you're negative on any of this stuff, you have to be thinking, A, the CPI report's going to be a hot surprise, and B, um, uh, Powell's going to throw a lot of water on this thing by being... Uh, yeah, we've got we've got two of them coming up, don't we? Yeah. So, you know, those, those, that means you'd need, you'd need probably both. And then, of course, you know, retail sales come in hot, shows the consumer still going nuts with the buying. Yeah, well, and I look at the I look at the uh, affirm stock, you know, going up so much uh, AFRM, and that's kind of a little bit of evidence that uh, these guys not only are maxing out their credit cards, but they're also uh, hitting the buy now pay later uh, button pretty good. This doesn't have enough data on the monthly chart, so let's look at. No, no, no. You got to go to something shorter because it hasn't been around that long. Yeah. There but on the, on the one year graph, you certainly can see that they have come into the game here from $10 to $40, you know, so somebody's using this uh, buy now, pay later, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So I think that's I found that kind of a, interesting. There's going to be a lot yeah. of people doing a buy now, pay later on Christmas, I think. Yeah, I mean, consu consumer spending 70% of the economy. So, you know, now mm -hmm. it seems like we're using the credit card because they're above a trillion dollars. And now we're using the Affirm, which has gone from 10 bucks to $42. So uh, it looks like they, um, they're they using leverage a little bit to uh, mm -hmm. keep the thing going. Uh, yeah. Google had a report out um, that wasn't so great. Uh, some kind of a jury thing coming in on their uh, monopoly. I mean, it's kind of okay. a joke to you know to um, question whether Facebook, Google, Apple, these people are monopolies because they control these things so heavily. You know. Yeah. But Google, uh, Google introduced its new Bard software for mass consumption. Okay. So I jumped. It's it's AI like Chat GPT. Right. So I jumped on that right away to see, you know, give it a test and see what happened. I asked it to do a little programming for me. Uh -huh. I asked chat GPT the same problem and it did very well. So it was a very competitive product in your opinion. And I tried it on Bard and I got a lousy answer. Oh, okay. So you're not so hep on Bard. Not yet. I got you. And how hep are you on this stock? Because it seems to me like it's uh, trying to uh, give up the ghost here a little bit uh, as long as it stays under 135. Yeah, but I, I again, I think it's... See this attractor, this green horizontal line right here? Yeah, yeah. That's coming from... Where is that coming from? Right here, these lows. Yeah. So that's an attractor I put at the lows. It held all the way out here again, yep. like that. And then it went above it, then below it. And now it's above, but just touching it. I yeah. think that line's going to hold it and it's going to go on up. Yeah, and that's around 130, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 130, 135 is kind of, a window, it's kind of a window here. And I think whichever way it breaks out of that window is going to be significant, huh? I agree. Yeah, might be And there's where we're too. going. There's the ne next attractor above and it's at, what, 153 and change? Yeah. So, you know, this might be a setup to uh, price out some strangles where you buy calls at 135 or 140 and you buy your puts at 130 or 125. And then you look for all heck to break loose one way or the other. And <laughs> yeah. uh, you only, you know, your limited risk on both sides. Let's look at it in the daily for just a second. I trade stocks on daily charts. Uh-huh, sure. Yeah, well, look how sideways that's been since 
Yeah, which probably August, means premiums might be September. pretty low, you know? Mm, I don't know anything about options. Yeah, well, volatility is a big key. If the prices haven't done much, obviously the premiums uh, tend to shrink, you know? Okay. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, it does look like it's a, kind of a binary neighborhood. Mm hmm You know, and that's, uh, that's interesting. Let's swing over to Apple, which uh, surprised some people by going up towards 195. Mm hmm And... Uh, Let's see if this is something apparently, that's... Uh, apparently, there's a lot of people buying $1,000 phones. Well, then they are trying to open up India. If you can get uh, 6 billion people to buy anything, you'd probably do oh, all right. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I didn't know they didn't have a market over there. Yeah. So Apple, way up, didn't yet break the all-time high, which was back here. So you can see all-time high blue line is sloping down to the current mm -hmm. price. And the all-time low coming from way back when is sloping up. We've got gold on top, price above, price still above, price still above, touches the DMA. That's today. Yeah. Mm, I think it's going to, this one I think is going to test this DMA a few more times because it's almost flat, you see? Yeah. And with a flat DMA, we're looking for it to test it and be in congestion sometimes four or five days. You know, a lot of these uh, Magnificent Seven, uh, you know, are losing a little bit of altitude here today in advance mm -hmm. of this report. So it's uh, kind of interesting to see. We saw Google losing a little altitude. We see Apple losing a little altitude. Microsoft up four or five bucks. So, uh, you know, uh, as you can see, and you are pointing out, you know, we've had a big rally and it is up against some type of resistance there and backing off to go back towards the gold or the purple line is certainly not off the table, I guess. Huh? And see when the blue candle right here hit the upper outer band, right? It just kept going up at the upper outer band. Like I was saying on that other one we just yep. did. Yeah. See how it continues to follow that until it drops and there it is. I got you. And that gives you parameters. That's what you need is parameters, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so we hit the Google, we hit the Apple, we hit the Microsoft, and let's hit the Meta, M-E-T-A. See if- That's a good one, I like that one too. Social, how the communication sector is doing. <laughs> sideways. Yeah. Sideways, sideways, but I see, see this vertical blue line? That's a sunny band's buy signal, so I'm long this one. And uh, Meta's uh, lost some altitude today too, down seven, eight dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, seven eighty-seven, seven ninety. I'm as confused as the next guy because you know you can't fight the tape, and the tape is very strong. But this forty-six hundred neighborhood, I'm, I'm not going to get on one penny one way or the other. This neighborhood we're in now, you know, uh, with these Elliott waivers saying this is either mm -hmm. the end of this uh, one, two, three a reversal, and we're going to start five waves to the downside, or they were totally wrong, and we're in the involved in five waves to the upside. I think that's very fascinating uh, yeah. going, going into this, this week and next week. If it was going to have the pullback, this might yeah. be the prime zone of which to have it, huh? Yeah, I would agree with that. You know? Um, Jim, do you get my Sunday night newsletter, Sunny Side of the Street? No. Because I put a chart in there by an L. Uh, uh, he's sort of an Elliotician. Uh, do you know Glenn Neely? I've heard the name. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, Laguna Beach, he, I thought, right? Yes, you're correct. Yeah. He writes, uh, I mean, he predicts with his Elliot Wave uh, modifications, predicts prices. And I always have a copy of his prediction in my sunny side of the street. Oh, I got to give you my email so you can, uh, or you know, I'll shoot you an email with me. Yeah, that would be great. That yeah. would be great. I, uh, I, oh, I he, he has it going. Log. I love information. <laughs> I get yours and read it too. Yeah. You know, he, like I say, that's how you keep uh, kind of an idea of what, uh, you know, many aspects are. And sometimes you pick a little idea out of each one that makes some sense. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. So Glenn's predicting this is going way up. I mean, not okay. meta, I mean the market. It's going yeah. to fly through forty six hundred. Yeah. We're so basically, 5, he's saying, yeah, he's saying we're on a five waves up, and mm -hmm. he is saying, uh, he's not saying, but that would mean that the earnings surprise we saw this year is going to be repeated next year, 
Mm-hmm. And again, if you have a combination of these feds, the guys bringing the rates down and the, and the labor market not changing its colors, now you'll have cheaper money and everybody's got a job. That is a, you know, I wouldn't want to stand in front of that. So that's, no, that's probably that's where bullish. he's coming from. Yeah. yeah, that's very bullish. And like I say, if the earnings go up to 250 or $3 on the S&P and you just use your mathematics of uh, 18 or 20 P ratio, you know, that's how you get into the fives and maybe even the sixes over time. Mm-hmm. Hard to, hard to imagine, but uh, you know, people who saw the Dow go from 3000 to 40, uh, 38,000 is probably. Too, <laughs> yeah. Right? Or people who saw your house, your house go from 150 grand to a million something probably is a shock. That's what mine's done. Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. So we got Meta. We got the, uh, and then uh, what else is on the back? How about uh, Netflix, NFLX? It's kind of disappointing, I think. Well, it's up 11 today. Yeah, but. See how that, okay, there's a flat DMA right there. You see yeah. how this came down and then we're waiting because this is congestion and it goes below it? Right. That could happen to Meta too. That could happen to Microsoft, that same kind of pattern. But then it's bouncing right back up and today we're on the DMA and it's, oh my goodness, you can't even tell. It's still gold though. So that's still bullish. Now, uh, got, uh, Lady on TV is pretty sharp. She said uh, the two leaders in this uh, network of uh, streaming is Netflix and Disney, and Disney is discounted, and she thinks there's a big value there. Let's put up Disney and see if there's is any... It DIS? DIS. Let's see if there's any evidence that it's a good deal down here. Yeah, I'm looking for evidence. We're detectives. Exactly. Yeah. Talk is cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Losses aren't, right? <laughs> oh, boy. So it's uh, it's around the 90. Listen, I'll tell you right now. I mean, you know, if there is value down here, you're getting it from two hundred and ten dollars back in twenty uh, twenty one on the high and you're getting it at 80, 90 bucks. That's a pretty good discount. This is almost the same pattern as one we just looked at. It comes yeah. down, bounces off the flat DMA four times, drops below it and right back up again above it. Yeah. See how now it's got three days where it's just at that level. Right. And I think it's going up from there. So and, we're, going, uh, we're going to 9620. Okay. And we're, and we're at 92 something. That's yeah, 92, 92 something. And uh, yeah, I had some uh, support around uh, 87, 88. Uh, that's turned up. And then I got a little, yeah, that 88 uh, number is uh, coming up quite a bit. So if you did take a bite out of it here, you'd certainly want it to stay above 88, right? Well, yeah, and look where the low, bottom sunny band is. It's at 88. That's what I'm so there's your, uh, anywhere between 88 and 90, you'd want it to stay above if this thing's going to keep working out a little bit. Mm-hmm. But look at the red DMA histogram. It's moving down. So that's an alert warning that we could be turning. It doesn't say we are turning. It just says watch out for it. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, if it broke under 90 and then that thing goes into the when it goes lower than even, it's a it's a negative. Yes. In other words, you got that uh, you got the uh, you know bars underneath it and bars above it. So uh-huh. if you go bars underneath it, that means it's a more we're moving case. down. Yeah, yeah. We're moving down. Yeah. See this little gap over here. Mm-hmm. That has yet to be filled. Yeah. So we could get down to that. And that's eighty four to eighty six ballpark, right? Yeah. I've got 86, I think that says. Yeah, 86. That's interesting. That could happen. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of believe me, uh, the next uh, two weeks, a lot of things could uh, start getting pretty bouncy based on how things come out. Um, With regards to, um, we hit most of them there. What about the Tesla, TSLA? My favorite stock. Yeah. I'm reading Elon Musk by... uh, Walter Isaacson. Oh, yeah, that's supposed to be a good one. It's a great one. Yeah. It's great. So I've drawn a yellow box around this area where it seems to collect and congest all through here. Right. So we have to ba- break the top of this box for this one to put in a good new high. So it's not ready yet. It's sitting here at this flat. Oh, it's above the flat DMA. It's at the upper inner band. 
Yes, yeah, see, I think that, oh, and look at, no, that's the square. Uh, so I think it's going to break on up and touch at least the top of that square to, what does this say? 260, 259 to 260, right in there. And we're currently at 238. So I yeah. think we've still got some upside potential in this. Yeah, no, they brought it down to um, uh, to some support down there when they tried to bring it to 200, 220, and it definitely didn't like that neighborhood. It's starting to move up mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but you definitely would like to see it break above that high recently of around right here. Above, I wanted I wanted to go above 250. Yeah, if you go above 245, 250, it's probably game on, right? Oh yeah, then then we'll be moving up to 276, 275. Well, I don't know if this is going to move the needle, but my friend in Phoenix is buying a new one and he says he's getting 7,500 bucks credit of some type. So cool. Yeah. So, well, I would buy, I like SUVs though. So I'm waiting for him. I'm either going to buy a Maybach or an SUV Tesla. I got you. But they don't have one yet. My buddy loves Genesis. He thinks that's a good company. A good well, company. How, what's the symbol? I don't know if they even have a symbol. Genesis, or maybe it's made by Acura or something like that, but it's called Genesis. It's the one that oh. Tiger Woods crashed up. So maybe that's Oh, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Well, we got that stuff uh, pretty much done. Now, uh, let's take a look at some of the different sectors here. Um, you know, um, gold had a big run up to 2135 and just basically fell apart. Yeah, and, well, uh, I don't um, think it fell apart. I just think it's stumbling. But I'm, you know, I'm trying to say, uh, if you bought it at 2134, it fell apart. Uh, uh, yeah. But the point yeah. being is, is, uh, is there a net underneath it? Uh, I had a yep, number, of, sure I had a number of about 1980, 1990 as a key area of support. Uh, and I've got 1983 and a half. Yeah, yeah. So this is a key area. And 1950, I see you have a number 1947. So if you want to use broad strokes, 1950 to 1980 is really a neighborhood where it better hold. Other than mm -hmm. that, uh, the the floor might drop off for a hundred bucks underneath, right? Yeah. Well, this is a this one is a Fibonacci line and it retracement, and it's also the lower outer band. So, I think we'll drop to that. Yeah, and that would be a heck of a value uh, if, in fact, they're going to drop rates, the dollar is going to drop, and then things are going to fly. If this thing goes down to that 1979, 1980 level, I'm going to go buy some more. Yeah. The problem I have with the gold a little bit is, uh, first of all, it keeps on the on my 20 year graph, it keeps making high points and the RSI can't get through 60. So to oh, me, right. that, Look at that. yeah, if you go with the law, yeah, you see that, yeah, boom, 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 boom. Uh, and this is on the long term graph. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that's a problem for me. And the other problem is, is, you know, I'm looking at Newman Mining, NEM. And it's kind of hard to believe gold's going through the roof and Newman Mining, who just bought Newcrest and now is like the biggest gold guy around, has a chart that looks like that. Particularly if you look at the five-year graph. Okay. Because, you know, uh, it is not looking good trend-wise on it at all, in my view. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you look at the uh, longer term, longer term, yeah, just look at the longer term, you get an idea. Wow. You see, that doesn't look like a big bull market in gold. No, it sure doesn't. You know, and that's where that's my so the two yellow flags I've got on gold is the RSI is having a hell of a time getting through 60 on the on the rallies. Um, and the other is that uh, a major, major gold stock here uh, doesn't seem like it's uh, going to the dance. Back over here towards the beginning of the charts, you see how flat the DMA is? Uh -huh. So I drew that as an attractor saying that price is going to see that level again and again. And you see we're almost down to it. That's it. Uh, that line is now at 3107. Yeah. I think we'll drop to that. And that, you know, that, I mean, you know, if you think gold might have this future of 23 or 2500 or something like that, Mm -hmm. You would imagine a guy who's taking it out of the ground at a much cheaper price uh, would go up in price. You know what I mean? You'd think, but you know, these things aren't always linear. No, no. And also, like I say, you don't know who's running the company. If it's a moron, it could be a problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. So the gold, uh, we're pretty much on the same page there as far as uh, 
you know, that 1950, 1980 area, is that your base if in fact you're bullish? I'm bullish on gold. So, um, let's you know, they over. say that they say that one ounce of gold can always over history buy a man's suit. So man suits to $2,000 for a nice suit. Well, he's obviously not going to raw stores for his suit. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. Let's go over to um, oil because uh, Occidental Petroleum just uh, bought out a company who's like one of the best uh, shale drillers. And so let's see if oil looks good. Because I, I had oil hitting a really big time to, uh, to buy the heck out of it at 6880 because that was a, a big moving average for me. And it was also the low. I'm looking the at the futures contract. What are you looking at? Well, I was looking at, uh, yeah, I'm well, I'm going out on the five year or, or the 10 year. Uh, you know, I'm doing a longer term graph. Uh, so uh, the front month, you got to do uh, February now. Now, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm doing the continuous contract, so it's in there. Okay, so on the continuous on my 20 year, I have a long term moving average that came in at 6880. And last uh, this month's low is 6880. So I don't think it's coincidental. And we have popped a little bit off of it. But mm -hmm. um, it seems to be trapped in a 70, 80 uh, window right now. Do you see yeah. it trapped in a 70, 80 window a bit? Yeah, definitely is. It's trying to make it below the DMA and go down to the lower line. Yeah. Lower if you break 68, 80, you will go to that lower line. <laughs> That's where we're going. Yeah. And again, the story behind it, if we want stories, is uh, uh, U.S. is a huge producer killing OPEC with all this production and supposedly, if they can bring it under 60, it will stop the production out of the U.S. because that's their line in the sand for profitability. So there's oh, really? some who think, there are some who think they could flood the market a bit. Uh, Saudi Arabia crash this thing a little bit. And mm -hmm. then, of course, uh, get the U.S. to stop producing because it's under their, their threshold. Yeah. But uh, then there's another. Well, that's like there's playing a, Monopoly. And then there's another thing that China is going to get stimulus out there, and that's going to give them a bit of a rebound, and that would take you towards 80. Mm -hmm. So right now it's 71-ish. Yeah, uh, I think we're going to see 80 again, but not before we take this little correction down to the lower inner band. Gotcha. So you think they'll probably try to take it down towards 60, maybe get the U.S. to halt their production a little bit. And then once that happens, then you got the supply-demand answer. And, and they'll rally. Can, now you can go up. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Let's throw up Oxy because, you know, old uh, Buffett uh, is a big Oxy man. There you go. And uh, what are we seeing there as far as potential? We're seeing uh, sideways movement again, and it hits the flat DMA. In this case, it looks like it could bounce off of that right now see how yeah. we have red histogram and then it turned gold i've so got a very big important number positive. here you tell me what your number is i got a big important number on oxy at uh, 56 bucks i've got 66 let's see what's at 56 i'm talking about underneath you got anything yeah you got 57 there there 660 so the gold is gold right around 56 yeah yeah so yeah, that's the, the dma well, that's a pretty uh, low uh, differential between the current price and that, huh? Mm -hmm. it could, uh, yeah, that wouldn't take but a few minutes to fix that. Now, if we uh, got above 65, uh, 60 and then 65, that would pretty much open up the uh, open up the floodgates a bit, wouldn't it? Sure would. We'd go back and test this level again, which is what, 70, is that say 78? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the highs were 78, 85 in the last uh, bit of time here. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I'd keep an eye on this one. And, uh, you know, the fact that they just bought the uh, one of the biggest uh, producers, uh, drillers down there in that Permian Basin. Uh, mm -hmm. Longer term, obviously, they're looking for that to add value, right? Mm hmm. Yep. And the fact that they bought that company and the stock didn't really drop very much also is, I think, interesting because mostly when you make purchases, you know, your stock drops. Yeah. yeah. There's an interesting one. Cigna was going to try to buy out Humana. CN? A CI? That's the symbol so. CI? I think so. I don't know. And Humana is UHM. Yeah. Humana, I think, is UHM. Yeah. HUM. HUM, I mean. 
I don't know if we need monopolies in the medical profession. I think we already <laughs> high enough prices, don't we? So it's the Humana is reacting to that news that Cygnus decided now not to buy them. But, you know, your chart is actually telling you uh, back at 500 that that de uh, deal is probably not going through. Yeah. When you broke underneath the purple and the blue and the gold. Exactly. So you, you really got a little uh, advance notice on this news today by just following that. Well, and, and people who read Sunny Side of the Street every weekend get that information in advance. Yep. Let's put up the uh, CI, the Cigna, because that's been going through the roof and they're going to uh, get $10 billion and buy back stock. So you can't mm -hmm. get better. That's you know, Cigna, you can't get better news than that, right? Yeah. We're not buying the other company. We're going to take the $10 billion and give it to you guys by buying back stock. That's right, which will make it go up. And today is having a very lovely day. Wow. Yep. Look at that. So that was uh, that was good news. That's what you call really good news. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, forty-three point. No, that's yeah. That's forty-three points up. Let's take a look at the uh, financials here. Let's look at something like, uh, you know, uh, XLF. XLS? And, uh, XLF. Oh, That'll F. give you the uh, F, uh, X-ray, X Larry, Frank. That gives you the big banks. And then we'll look at the regionals, KRE. I got uh, the banks uh, up Come a on. little bit. Yeah, these things have been a pretty good rally. XLF's gone from 30 bucks up to 36. Here's your 20% jump. Uh -huh. And the and, buy uh, the Sunny Bands buy signal on this one? Because I don't look at this one, so I don't already have the lines on. Well, it looks like at 32, you got your buy. There's your buy right there. Yeah. And so if you got in at the worst part of that bar, that would be 42. Yeah. So you get in at 42. No, that's 22. Wait a minute. What is this value? 32, 31. All right. So let's say 32. And now it's up to 36. Yeah. That's not bad. No. And it's gaining steam, not losing it, right? It is. Let's and look the at the RSI is above my 70. I use um, 70 and 30 because Connie Brown, I, I read a book by Connie Brown, and she made a really good case for using 70 and 30 instead of 80 and 20. Okay. So I've got 70 here, but you can see we're just riding it on that RSI. Yeah. How's those regionals looking? KRE. Those are the regional banks and you know they got whacked when uh, Silicon Valley Bank got whacked and they've been on the rebound ever since. So they were a steal. Another classic case of you know when everybody's doing one thing, do the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well that one's definitely doing well. Yeah. Did you see how it got dumped in March? Yeah. And then bam. Well, and there, there, right there is a gap to fill. Yep. Hmm. Now I'm reading a lot of uh, emails that say we're going to have another bank crisis. Well, inflammatory uh, journalism is not, sells. Uh, not, it's not going out of style. Mm -hmm. It sells. <laughs> It sells. Eyeballs sell. All right. So anyway, uh, that looks pretty good. So the banking sector looks pretty darn good. And then uh, what about some of these home builders, XHB? Uh, uh, because uh, I looked at Toll Brothers and their revenues dropped pretty sharply year over year. And uh, but here the X, uh, the home builders are up near their high. Wow, they really are up near their high. Look yeah. at that. So, well, you know, you know uh, there's not enough houses in California to go around. I guess so, not. So there needs to be a whole lot of building happening. Yeah. Look, that's where the attractor is. Can you see that? Let's let's put it in this way. Right here we stagnate. 
and we jumped above it there and broke out strongly. Yeah. That's what typically happens when you hit one of these attractors. It's usually a str either you bounce off of it and pull back or you fly up above it. And that's what yeah, happened because this here. thing has gone nuts since November. It's gone from Oh, and you see also huh? see how it's above the upper outer band this whole time? Yeah. That's bullish. Very bullish to be above the upper outer. Yeah. And the RSI, uh, you know, is uh, is in the nosebleed section too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's up to 79.59. Yeah, there is just no evidence of any turn at this point. Uh, yeah. And even on the uh, even on the monthly that I work with, um, I'm not seeing any divergence on RSI, which you would if this was a kind of a blow off top, you'd see some kind of a divergence. Right now, I don't see anything. No. It's just going so up. That's a, that's a good one as well. Um, and uh, let's look just for a second at the weekly on this one. Let's see what the longer term is. Oh, my. It's just yeah. up. No, this is a, a bull in a, a China shop. Yeah. Um, gonna... If they were going to stimulate over in China, which supposedly they're going to do, but they have deflation in China. Their CPI, or their uh, uh, consumer prices dropped, actually negative 0.5%. Really? So, uh, but that could mean stimulus is coming. And when I hear stimulus, I think of gambling over there. And I think of Las Vegas Sands, LVS. So let's see if LVS is setting up for anything good. Because it used to be in the 60s, went down into the 40s here. And uh, now this is, again, on a long -term, longer term chart. This is monthly. Yeah. This is the way I always like to play China, because I know if things are going well over there, they're going to be in Macau. Mm-hmm. Have you been to Macau? Uh, yeah, but a long time ago. Yeah, me too. Well, we are below the flat DMA and gold's on top. But see all these little red bars getting closer and closer to the zero line? Yeah. This thing has a little downside to go. Probably go Oops. down to see this attractor at 41 something. Uh-huh. Uh, it'll probably go right to there. Yeah. But then, you know, we... We always gamble. We always pay for entertainment, no matter what kind of depression we're in. Well, I was looking at uh, this movement as possibly the move from 30 to 65 being like a, an A move. Uh, and then are we making about a 61% correction? Uh, if you take 30 bucks and, thir and 65, it's 35 bucks. This is called rough math. 61% yeah. Would give me 22 bucks, 21 bucks. 65 minus 22 or 21 brings me into the 43 number. And that 43 number 43 is, about as, low, is about as low as it's gotten. Yeah, and this one is at 4171. So I think we're going to move down to there. It's the lo lower inner band and an attractor. Yeah. But it's possible that it's, from a, back uh, here. Uh, it's possible that it's a one, two, three formation. And, uh, and if we can get above 50 or 55, there could be significant upside, maybe, huh? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's better to buy at a higher price on the way north than it is to try to buy low and then hope it goes north. You know? Well, that's what I do. I buy stocks that are going up. Yeah. And so if, this thing buy, gets above, at, if this thing gets above 50 or 55, that would definitely start qualifying as it's going up, I think. And we could draw some cycles on this. Look, we've got up and then down, up and then down, up and then down. What have we got over here? It's longer, but it's up. So we could even go down to the lower outer band that uh, whatever that says, 3586. All right, now I'd like to talk about two thing, two markets that if mm -hmm. the market were vulnerable up here, if they obviously have had very extended moves and let's start out with SMH and see if there's anything there that might tell you that uh, a correction might be in the offing. I think we're moving on up on that one. Well, I mean, I, right now, I'm just wondering if there's any evidence that it could, like, what about that green line at 173.93? Is that kind of a cap? 173? I see. It's one. Oh, you're talking about the upper band? Yeah. I'm talking about the upper band. That's probably not a cap. That's probably the same kind of thing where it's going to ride it up as it, as it goes on up and ride that top band up. You don't think it'll hold it? I don't. No. And, See, today, look, it's look and today it's certainly not holding it. It's up 264 again today. And look at the histogram. Green from back here. 
So right back here, it's it's telling me start looking for buys. And yep. it goes up, 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 up. And it's almost ready to cross over that zero line right there. Yeah. And we're looking at significant moves up. Yeah, I mean, this thing is racing here today. Uh, uh, and it has, forget about today, uh, it has been racing since the 7th, which is last week. So since last week, they're going from 158 all the way up to 166. Uh, people are plowing into this. Let's look at the daily and see what we've got on that one. The other uh, statistic I thought was interesting is, is that money market funds last week tanked uh, by $6.8 billion as it went into stocks. And really? uh, it was the biggest move into stocks uh, out of money market since March of 2022. So if you were wondering if the public is out, I think uh, if they were, they certainly came back last week pretty good. That's interesting to know. And they seem to be plowing into the more risky stocks uh, is what I've read. Really? In other words, you know, they're not going into uh, Coca-Cola. They're going into, obviously, SMH. Mm -hmm. well, let's see what Coca-Cola And the home builders. Oh, it's KO, isn't it? Yeah. But, I mean, that's, you know, my, the example there was more of like, uh, that's, uh, you know, a pretty huh. dry stock as far as compared to this stuff. Sorry, I typed the wrong symbol and I'm having to wait for it to load. Yeah. Well, no, the other one I wanted to watch is IGV, and that is the North American Tech Software sh Shares. And they, again, are up uh, just like SMH is. So all software is getting where the money is. Yeah. And that would be obviously yeah. everything from Palantirs to, uh, you know, to everybody like that, too. Hang on one second. Let's see how Coca-Cola's are doing. McDonald's has opened up. I want to look at that one too. McDonald's is opening up a new, what's it called? Yeah, I saw something. Mick, Mick Flurry or something. I don't know what it is, but it's some new, the three different states, they're going to try it out and see if people like it. It's all cold drinks. I like my coffee hot. Yeah. But they're trying to give Starbucks a run for its money. There we go. Finally. Yeah, Coca-Cola is stagnant. Well, like I say, what my point was is they didn't leave money market to buy a dead beat. They they they're going to they're playing the hot stock. Uh huh. Um, one uh, and uh, IGV and the other one's the same chart. They're blowing through the roof. One stock that might be interesting for people to keep an eye on is that Palantir P L T R. Okay, uh, let's get that one next. Because, you know that is a situation where uh, these guys help the governments uh, track information and. Uh, so they got pretty good customers, you know what I mean? Because the uh, government mm -hmm. agencies or whatever um, are their customers. Well, they've got, don't they have uh, like spyware protection or something? Yeah, uh, they've got uh, also a way of getting data on everybody's movements, I think. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they work so, with uh, government agencies and yeah. have for like 20 years. But yeah. then in the last few years, they've also been getting into uh, corporate clients for data management and also um, investing in very small um, uh, startups yeah. and um, heavily involved in AI research and development, that sort of thing, too. Well, they'll go back up. They, ba they bounce right. We've got a red bar in the lower outer. We've got a, is that it? That's a, looks like a little doji. But then we've got a blue bar here. This, to me, is a buy signal. They, you know, they brought it up to 22 bucks and they tried to bring it down to 15 bucks. 15 is a lot of support. Now it's about 16. And even the lows recently are probably decent support, 17. So as long as this stays above 16 or 17, I think you can play ball. And if it yeah, gets above 19 or 20, uh, you know, uh, you don't know where it could fly to. And this is 1830. 1803. I'm sorry. That's where we are right this moment. Yeah. RSI is weak, so it has some room to go up. The slope is turning up. Looks like that's going to go up. We've got purple on top on the DMA, little tiny bars, and I think that could very easily go on up to gold in the next couple of days. There is a big gap between 15 and 17 that it uh, went into just a little bit. Yeah, right the, back uh, here. But uh, the fact that they can't get it to close that gap and go down to 16 or 15, Mm -hmm. uh it might be i mean obviously if it has if it leaves that down there you know that that's very positive as well but that is a exactly. risk that it might go down and fill that at some point too you don't know that's true 
Yeah. All right. Well, we're coming to the top of the hour. It is time to let everybody know how they can get all this information from you. And then I'll explain how they get information from me. Well, I'm easy to reach. My phone number is 760-908-3070. You can call me anytime. I work seven days a week for fun. Um, moneymentor.com is my website. I've been trading for 43 years in two weeks. And uh, I would love to help you. What's the email over there, uh, Sonny, in case somebody wanted to email you like me? <laughs> okay, it's, it's Sonny at moneymentors.com. Okay, money mentors, uh, plural? Not plural. Okay, money mentor. If I could spell it, money. I, I put it in there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because I'm going to, uh, I'd love to uh, get the Sunday night stuff. And I think everybody should get the Sunday night stuff. And so basically to get that, if, uh, if we sent you uh, an email with our email, you could put us on your list, correct? I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. So everybody should take advantage of that. That's a no brainer. And, and anybody uh, that wants a free trial of Sunny Bands, free seven day trial, just text me trial. Yeah, text, text or even send you the email at uh, sunny way, yeah. at moneymentor.com sometimes it's easier for people to just uh, if they're in front of their computer or something maybe do that and uh, that'd be great that'd be fantastic um, as far as option professors concerned uh, I've got indicators that I use to uh, figure out market direction for my own money and I do share them with people so I have a link that I send out if you'd like to get the link all you got to do is give me a call excuse me uh, give me an email uh, optionprofessor.com is the website and you can put your information there or you can go optionprofessor at gmail.com and then once I get it I'll send it over out to you and we can have a short talk about what you're looking at and uh, I think uh, they've been great for me so uh, people I've shared it with are very happy so we'll go from there all right Sonny very good to talk to you again we got a big week ahead of us we'll have to see how things pan out it certainly looks binary though it looks binary which means uh uh, feast or famine by the end of the week so we'll all have a uh, a lot of action uh david i'll send it back to you yeah yeah i can't wait so anyway uh, david i'll send it back to you and thanks everybody for listening and we'll be back again with uh, another broadcast next monday fantastic thank you Jim. all right uh, great discussion so uh just a quick reminder for everyone be sure to subscribe to time research on youtube or your favorite podcast app or you can also just go to timingresearch.com to get access to any of the uh, uh, to this recording as soon as I get it posted, as well as any of the past shows the time and is 11 presentations. A.M. Also, you can now follow Timing Research on Substack. Uh, just go there if uh, you're a subscriber and just search for Timing Research and subscribe. Uh, and I just want to thank my guests again for today: Sonny Harris of MoneyMentor.com and the Option Professor of OptionProfessor.com. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, David. Have a great day.